bringing LinkedIn leads into your CRM, whatever you're using. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. And let's look for a moment beyond the tool. What does it mean? Customer Relationship Management. All what you do on LinkedIn it has the goal to build relationship, to earn trust, to deliver value to people who can afford your services so you get a good return of investment for your time and your efforts. It's, it's honest business, um, but it only works when we actually build those relationships. Tools help us, of course, but it's, it, it's, this is like the last part of the journey. You have found the right people, you have connected with them, now you want to follow up. So there are a couple of methods to get the people uh, to your CRM, and I'm gonna show you two. Um, the first one, and should probably be the one that you just start with, that you could potentially start with, is to get a copy of all of your data on LinkedIn. I put a link in the slide deck, so if you download the slides, uh, you can just press this link and you get to this um, menu. It's in the privacy settings of your personal LinkedIn profile. This is where it says like download all the data you have. You get an email 10 minutes later with the download archive. And there is a complete list of your contacts with a lot of information about that contact, those contacts, and that is now importable. You could also use a tool that we might have mentioned before, like Linked Helper, um, to crawl through your given contacts and then export it from there. You get a lot of additional content there. But I might have not ever said that. But <laughs> you have to think about it this way. Do you really want hundreds of unqualified people in your CRM? This is my contact list. It's 7,988 people and probably after this meetup, 8,000. So do I want them in my CRM? I, I don't. I don't. I want to have the people in my CRM that are serious. What do we call serious people? Sales qualified leads. In marketing, we define marketing qualified leads um, as people who have shown interest, who have maybe subscribed to a newsletter, who have shown engagement. And then at the point we want to hand them over to sales, we call them marketing qualified leads. Now, if a sales guy says, that looks interesting, I'm going to follow up on that, then it's a sales qualified lead. So SQL in short, what makes a sales qualified lead for me personally? First of all, they have passed my initial research filter. I've been searching for those people, so I have used filters and parameters like the company size, job title, seniority, and they have gone through that. They have accepted the connection request. Sounds super basic, but not everybody accepts your connection request. Then this is the hardest one, the hardest filter. They have actually answered your uh, the messages uh, that you sent to uh, sent to them. I would say maybe twenty percent of people who you send a message to answer. That of course that depends on 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 your approach and the message that you're sending. But since all of us are overwhelmed by email and now messages as well, you can't expect everybody to give you an answer. But the the people that are interested, they're gonna send you a message. So. Um, they can also make use of an offer. After people have replied to me, I will invest more time and talk to them and see if they could actually use my product or my service. And if they can't use it, I don't want them in my CRM. Yeah, I, I might have other uses um, for them, benefits that we can share and exchange, but it's not where I want people in my CRM. And last but not least, if they are interested in the meeting, this is the latest point uh, where we'll definitely put them into the CRM. Maybe one point before, but once they are interested in a meeting and maybe a meeting is set up or we're talking about having a meeting and I don't want to forget it anymore, that I want a meeting with that guy and that guy wants a meeting with me, um, then they will definitely be qualified as an SQL for me and we will set up a meeting and I will put them into the CRM. That's, that's the manual method that I very much prefer to keep a clean CRM. Then I add those SQL, sales qualified leads, to the CRM. Here is an actual screenshot from my CRM called ActiveCampaign 
and the sales pipeline that people are in. So first of all, they land on the left hand side on a list of people I'm interested to actively connect and reach out. Then there are some people that are highly interesting. In my personal opinion, they go on the high potential list. They, they move from left to right. And the LinkedIn people that I'm actively chatting with, they might land immediately in the in contact list because we are already talking about making an appointment. So they land here. If they're particularly promising, they go into the hot contact list. And on the right hand side from that, we already have a meeting. We might want to create an offer and we, we actually track this until the first invoice that is being paid. That is, that is my opinion on how far to go. Most people end up at signing the contract, which is fine as well. So this is what you do with the people. You put them into your sales pipeline in order to not forget them, in order to prioritize them, who you can help um who wants your help and um that has a win-win um, situation for both of you so that's what i do here and then if they are on my interest list and i have sales navigator for example applied i mark them as a lead and now i will engage with their content and i will connect them in my own content i think a guy who does it really well i mentioned him before he is uh, one of the two captains of the pirate summit and in this recent post from, I think two days ago, he, um, he even, he applauds his own team. The Pirate X crew is absolutely on fire. Um, and he now tags people and praises them and mentions them um, in their efforts. And this increases, uh, this creates immense engagement. Everybody who's being tagged uh, for them is this post is highly visible. They are highly incentivized to, to comment on this and you can see that he got already a hundred likes and seven com comments under this posts so uh, till is also a great guy that that i look up to in terms of connecting so victoria blechmann till orman are people that are just born connectors who do it in a way that is zero douchebag and full of heart and authenticity so i always try to look towards people like that to not become a marketing douchebag myself, which seems to become my life goal. The give, 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 ask method is absolutely key here. First giving, and we, we talked about this in detail, how to give on LinkedIn during the LinkedIn content magic um, meetup, which you can download all of the videos and slides to for free at getpiratesgoods.com slash magic. I really think you could you, you could use this as a starting point and then start with the LinkedIn network growth. First, show what you have to offer, show your competence, your empathy and authority, then do more of the connection magic. So let's summarize. How do you get people from LinkedIn to your CRM? Uh, you download your contacts, all of your connections, and then you can filter them there. You could use a tool like Linked Helper to screen your content, uh, your connections. You can also get the followers and email addresses there. It's really nice. Then you want to add the sales qualified leads manually or semi automized to your CRM. And then you want to engage with those people um, with their content and your own content. And then you don't want to sell you want to give 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 ask you want to follow up like a pro and see is there a mutual benefit is this a win-win situation when you when you buy my stuff i really don't mind selling my stuff because i'm committed to only selling it when i can create a win-win situation and if somebody is not happy i've i've never even once like ran, ran after an invoice that was not being paid. That happened twice in my life. And I just said, okay, they are not happy, then that is okay. But I think two invoices in roughly 10 years of entrepreneurship not being paid is, is really decent. So that was the last part. So now we have the LinkedIn growth strategy, which consists of finding the right people the right way on LinkedIn, connecting with them systematically, and then following like a boss by bringing them over to your CRM and following up there. 
We talked a ton about marketing automation and other meetups if you're interested in what to do once they are in your CRM. But we now open up for the Q&A section, which is going to be the next video in this series if you're watching this after the live stream.